Ah, so moving along with uh, my little series of what's new in version 4 of Simplify 3D. Um, and in today's video, the subject is strong foundations, which is how <laughs> Simplify 3D describe this new feature or set of features. What it actually is, is improved support material, or at least at the bottom of support material. So uh, let's have a look to see what they have done. Let's see where we've got to on uh, Simplify 3D's uh, website with the what's new in version 4 section. Uh, we have done variable print settings, preview your process, seamless process transition, drag and drop reordering, improved sequential printing. We skipped over the dual extrusion customizations because I don't have uh, a dual extruder. <laughs> Uh, we've just done the variable extrusion sizing and the dynamic gap fill and uh, which brings us down to enhanced preview controls. Now I did do number three here, the position readout in the very first video because uh, it was relevant. Uh, I'm not really going to go into the rest of these in detail because they are fairly self-explanatory just by reading what's going on here. Um, it does uh, in some ways improve the way that you can navigate around in the print preview. Uh, the position readout is obviously the biggest sort of functionality really, the rest of them sort of nice to have. One thing I will say though is that now that you can set the uh, minimum layer to view and the maximum layer to view, uh, the two little up and down controls uh, that you can probably just about see if we click on this. Um, these two controls here is quite tricky because I used to use um, in the previous version of Simplify 3D you only had the maximum layer that you could toggle up and down. So the up and down buttons were a lot bigger and a lot easier to click on. Now that they're quite small, that's fairly tricky. However, if you just sort of get out of that habit and get into using the keyboard scrolling, number one new feature in the enhanced preview controls here, you can just use the up and down arrow keys on your keyboard to do that, which is uh, probably even better. So yeah, some little improvements there, but not really worth going into in detail. So moving on down, and the next thing is this strong foundations here, which is what we're going to cover today. And basically it boils down to two things. You can now set a number of solid base layers in your supports, and you can also add a brim to the supports. So we'll just have a quick look at that. So here we are in Simplify 3D, and I've just created a very simple model that uh, will definitely need supports. Uh, so let's have a look what's different between version 3 and version 4 for the supports. If I edit the process settings and go to the support, uh, you can see that I've already turned on generate support material. So let's bring up version 3 next to it. So we have a version 3 on the left and version 4 on the right. And uh, although these two dialogues look quite different, um, there really are only minimal changes. Most of the visual changes here come from uh, rearranging slightly the layout of the dialogues. So starting with the support material generation box area here, you can see that we have, uh, you know, still have the ability to specify which extruder the support material is going to be extruded from. Um, we can see that we still have the infill percentage we can set and the extra inflation distance that we can set. Then things change slightly as in version 3 we had the settings for the dense support layers here. These have now been moved into their own section on this dialog uh, down here and have added the ability, if your printer has the ability, to use a different extruder for the dense support material. Next up in version 3 was this option to print support every one layer. Now you can see that the next option we have up in version 4 is support base layers and this is one of the main additions to the supports in version 4. And by default this support base layers is at zero which uh, basically means it won't print any which is exactly the same as what you would get in version 3. So let's change this to let's say 3. OK that and do a print preview. And if we zoom in down to the bottom of this and bring down the layer preview height to there, you can see that what it's done, let's get a better angle on this, you can see that it has printed some uh, basically 100% infill uh, bottom layers. 
it then moves up and starts to produce the infill as normal. So what this is doing is it's giving you a more solid base for your support structures uh, in situations where they may have come off the uh, heated bed in the past. Um, now this is giving a larger area for the supports to adhere to, so they should stay in place much better. So let's back out of that and edit the process settings. Let's go back to supports and put the dialog for version three next to it. So we can see the other change down at the bottom in this particular box here is that in version three, we had a uh, print support every one layer. Now this is doing exactly the same thing as far as I can see in version four. So it's just a change in wording, which is probably quite a good idea because the wording in version three kind of suggested that if you change this to, let's say three, it would only print a support layer every three layers, which uh, is not the case. In fact, what it's doing is a lot closer to what the wording is in version four, and that is combining the support every X number of layers. So by changing it to three, what it will do is every third layer of the print, it will print out a support layer three layers thick. So if your nominal layer height is 0.2, it means that it will print your normal parts of the print at 0.2 mil layer height. And then every third layer, it will print a support layer 0.6 millimeters thick. So we'll have a quick look at that in uh, version four. So if we set that to five, which should give us a good visibility of what's going on, click OK and do prepare print we will get a little notification here about the ratio between the width and the height. So what that's saying is the height of our extrusion, and in this case the um, support layers, is much thicker than the width, which is, well, yeah, that's kind of what we're telling it to do. So we'll just say yes. And you can see, let's zoom out slightly, you can see that it has made very thick support layers. And if we go down, take this down to a about there. So okay, we've just printed a complete layer. If we go to the next layer, it, you'll see that it's just printing in the main print. So that's one, two, three, four, five, and now it's printed a five layer thick um, layer for the supports as well as obviously the normal print. So that's what that's doing. And uh, I would assume that the main feature or the main reason for this is to improve the speed of printing these because rather than having to print all of this material every layer, it can sort of batch it up and just squeeze out a load of filament every X number of layers, uh, which will greatly speed this up. And of course, you know, the print quality is not important on the uh, support material. So let's exit out of the preview mode and go back to edit the settings and into support. And let's see what else is new in version four. Well, not a great deal, really. You can see we've now got this separate section we've already discussed for the dense support material. The separation from part has just moved location. Uh, the automatic placement remains identical and the support infill angles also remains identical. So the other change that's in Simplify 3D version four is the ability for printing brims around your support structure. So I'm in version three here, and if we have a look, and let's say that we want to print a brim five outlines thick, and uh, let's preview that. You can see, and if we zoom in again, you can see that the uh, brim is only around the main printed part the uh, support structure has no brim whatsoever. So let's have a look at what uh, version four brings to the table. So there are no actual changes in the settings dialog related to the skirt or the brim, but uh, let's put a brim on this of five outlines and prepare this. And you can see that the brim now goes all the way around the print including the support structure. So again, if you're having issues with the support structure lifting off of the bed during the print, having the ability to put a brim around it, as well as having some solid support layers at the bottom will greatly strengthen the support structure and uh, also hold it down to the heated bed better. And uh, there you go. So, well, uh, yeah, I think there's definite improvements there. To be honest, personally, I don't use supports that often, uh, mostly for the reason that uh, all of the models that I print are mostly uh, designed by me, and I do my best not to, um, you know, have any supports. 
uh, occasionally they are completely unavoidable. And uh, in my case so far, because I don't know why, but I haven't had any issues with supports uh, lifting off of the bed. But I am sure there are people out there, uh, particularly with tall prints, I would imagine, where the uh, supports need to be very tall. Uh, may have had issues with the supports lifting off of the bed. In which case, this will be very useful. Anyway, there it is. There's our improved supports. And in the next video, we're going to be looking at the improved raft options in Simplify 3D version 4. So, until then.